up here. There we go. Uh, what kind of angles are those two that are highlighted here? What kind of angles are these two? Okay, so somebody said acute, and, and that definitely looks like that's the case, but um, specifically they are vertical angles. Now, we're going to write ourselves an equation, and what we said in geometry, usually the equations that we're going to write is that two things are going to be equal to each other, or two things are going to add up to some number. What's the case here with vertical angles? Yeah. No, no, not the equation. Just are these things going to be equal or are they going to add up to something? Yeah, they're going to be equal to each other. Remember, we, we kind of said that um, we can think of vertical angles like a bow tie. And when you wear a bow tie, you want both sides of that bow tie to uh, be the same. Otherwise, you look like a fool because, yeah, bow ties. Um, anyway, so we're just going to set those things equal to each other. So what's the equation going to be? That's right, yeah. So like I'm saying is that, hey, sometimes these things are going to be equal to each other on this case, or sometimes like they're complementary or supplementary and they're going to add up to a number. This time they're just equal to each other. Okay, so this is, if you do this on a quiz, you've got half of the points because you've used your geometry knowledge in order to set up a correct equation. Okay. Now you have to take it and uh, perform your algebra on it so that you can solve it. And whenever you do, you got to decide what kind of equation is it, what kind of thing are you going to do to solve it. So what do we got there? Quadratic. It's quadratic, which means that we're going to use what F word? Probably factor. Okay. So if we're factoring, this thing needs to be equal to zero. So we're going to get both of these guys over there to the left. So our new equation and combining our like terms, our new equation is 2x squared nah, minus 11x plus 5. Okay, so these numbers are pretty small here. We got 2 and 5. They're going to be very easy to factor by just guessing and checking. So let's just uh, open up our parentheses. What should these two multiply up to? 2x squared, so they have to be a 2x and a x. Okay, these two need to multiply up to 5. And again, they're uh, it's prime, so there's only one possibility, that is 5 and 1. So again, try to think about this before you put them down. We're trying to add up to negative 11. So try to think about where the 1 and the 5 should go. Yeah. yeah, 1 should go first, and the 5 should go here. Why? Uh, no, because you could have a 1 in the other one. That doesn't affect anything. Remember, we're trying to add up to 11. Yeah, what... What's the reason? Why do we put the 5 there? That's right. Because in order to check this, it's got to be this 5 times 2, this outside, that's going to get us our 10x, and on the inside, that's going to give us x. We can definitely get negative 11 if they are both negative. So a negative there, negative there, negative there, negative there. All kinds of negatives. However, is this problem done? No. Okay, so we've got to set each of the factors equal to 0. So what would the value of x be from the first set of parentheses? One half or 0.5, however you want to write it. And then from the other one, x equals just 5. That one's pretty simple. Okay. So we used geometry, write equation. We did some algebra to get some answers for that equation, but now it's not done. Now we need to go back and find the angle measurements and see if these answers make sense. It's got to be a, now it's a geometry problem again. So, um, you, you might be tempted to go, hey, this 0.5, it's probably not going to make much sense, but maybe it does make sense. Let's see. So let's plug in the 0.5. And remember, these are both exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which side we plug it into. Yeah, the, the linear side is much, much easier here. So one of these angles could be 12 times half minus 5. That's 6 minus 5, which is 1 degree. So here is a possible answer. Is it a sensible answer if this thing is drawn to scale? No. Yeah, so this is probably not true. Probably. Did I spell that right? You can't see it. There's a black bar. Oh. Yeah. Probably not. Let's pretend like that's spelled correctly. Okay. And then uh, let's try the five. This one might be a little bit more reasonable. And then minus five. So we got 60 minus five. We got. 55 degrees. 
That's more reasonable. Okay, so I would still want you to show me one degrees and then maybe make some sort of conclusion that that doesn't make much sense uh, with the picture. But, you know, maybe it's not drawn to scale or something like that. Now, how would you know that these answers are definitely not true? Like, you'd cross it off, you wouldn't write it down or something like that. How would you know if this is angle measurements or something? Gavin, what do you think? Um, well, you're trying to see the... The picture? Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Well, what I would probably do to start off is um, add the 55. Or, so you have 55, put it in for one of them. And if the other side for the um, for the linear pair, if it's over 90 degrees. There you go. Okay, so that's a good thing. Because sometimes when you're solving one of these things, you get an angle measurement that might be too big. If this is supposed to be a linear pair, and that's got to add up to 180 degrees, maybe you get something that isn't going to work here with the other angle, right? And that's definitely true. Maybe your angle is just too big. Is it possible that your angle is just too small? Like what? Yeah, that one degree. Maybe this isn't very sensible. What about if you solve something, you got a negative degree? Yeah. For us in geometry, that's not going to work. Maybe in a pre-calc class or something like that. But. So there's that one.